What is going on guys, this is your mediocre self-proclaimed Pokemon Master here, Tiggly Man. Today we're going to be going over a team building guide and how I go about building my teams for the VGC 2020 format. Before we kick this off entirely, one thing you guys need to check, if you plan on building a team, be sure to go to VGCStats.com. This will show all the usage for all the big threats you're going to be seeing in the online ladder because what's the point of making a team if you're not going to be necessarily ready for anything you're going up against per se. So just to get a rough idea of what you're going to be facing, here, um, here are the top used mons in VGC right now. You can kind of scroll through and look and everything up really till about the, um, let's see, the number 30 slot, 31. Because got to tell, I, I, I see quite a bit on Trick Room teams, just great support mon. But glance through here, when you, when you finish building your team, make sure you're able to take on this meta. Because what's the point of building a team if you don't know the meta? So keep that in mind. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the team building process. All right, guys, before we get fully into the team building process, just real quick here. So we have Pokemon Showdown pulled up. Again, if you don't know what Pokemon Showdown is um, and you're watching this team building video, I highly recommend you look up Pokemon Showdown and you get familiar with the online battling server. It's the best place for team building and also practicing teams before you take the time to go into your video game and start uh, breeding or however you're going to set up your team because it's a very time-consuming process. So you want to make sure you test it out prior to doing it. So, we have a team builder here. I also recommend keeping a damage calculator pulled up. Now, this is a Pokemon Showdown's damage calculator. So, this is set up for singles. So, just if you're playing a Kalka move like Rock Slide or Earthquake, remember if it's hitting more than one foe, it gets a 0.75 multiplier on it. So, Earthquake is really, it's not 100 power, it's 75 power if it's hitting multiple foes. But it, per se, the match goes, it's a 1v1 scenario, one of your mons versus one of your opponents, then it gets the full. 100 power hit but it's just when it hits multiple opponents gets that multiplier remember that because you don't want to calc earthquake and be like oh it does 100 percent no it does 75 percent if it's hitting multiple mons and then also if you get a bit stuck i like keeping the uh Shmogan strategy pokedex pulled up and you can look up their battle stadium double sets for their mons just to kind of give you a, a rough base on what the most optimal sets are for these mons of course they're not set in stone. You can modify them, but this will give you a rough idea what a mon's really good at. Now, when you go to build a team, I'm assuming you have a mon in mind that you would love to use. And for me personally, at the moment, you're going to want to find like your your base, your pr premier mon. For me right now, let's do Gastrodon. I really want to try to use Gastrodon. I really want to try to make him work. Now, he's not necessarily a sweeper by any means, but we'll do our best uh, to set this team up to make that happen. So step one, Figure out a mon you want to use that is viable. Gastrodon. So let's punch him in real quick. And we'll pull up Gastrodon. Now as you can see, let's check his stats real quick. Really bulky mon. Not too much of the defensive side, but specially defensive and he has a high HP stat. So this is a mon that can eat hits. And with a base 92 special attack, it's not crazy high, but it's definitely enough to keep pressure. As long as your stab moves, your water and ground moves are super effective, which water ground typing is fantastic with the only weakness being grass. Unfortunately, it is a quad weakness, but we'll get to that. So for something like Gastrodon, personally, what I want to do right now, I want to run it as a bulky assault vested attacker. So let's do max HP, max special attack, Keep it nice and simple. You can get more complex with your EV spreads, but that'll come with damage calculation. Okay, we'll get to that eventually. And then we'll just dump our extra four into defense. And of course, we'll always keep it modest. If you do plan on running him in a trick room, which actually, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We will run him, I believe it's quiet. Yep, plus special attack minus speed. And then we'll drop the IVs down to zero. Okay. For the ability... We have our Eevee set into place, bulky special attacker with a negative speed nature for the trick room. Abilities, you always want to glance these over to make sure you get the one that you want. The one I would want is Storm Drain. This is a great defensive and kind of offensive ability because once uh, Gastronaut gets to plus one, it can really put in work. Seriously, with the 92 base special attack at plus one, it hits pretty hard. So Storm Drain will pull in all the water attacks. As you can kind of see where this is going, the teammate we're going to pair him with will more than likely be someone weak to water. So it kind of negates that weakness because any water move that's used is going to get pulled right into Gastrodon and it's going to up her special attack by one stage and she won't take any damage. If we really wanted to be crazy, we could run Sand Force or run her on a Sandstorm team, but that's not the goal right now. In the current meta, Storm Drain's the way to go. So we'll do Storm Drain and then to further improve her bulk, I'm going to run her with an Assault Vest. Then let's do Move Pull real quick. I already have a Move Pull. 
in mind. Um, I'm picking Scald over like Surf or um, Hydro Pump. I believe she learns Hydro Pump. Yeah, just because it has high base PP and you can fish for burns. So you, with her low uh, special, I mean, um, her low defense, you can kind of spam Scald if you're stuck in a scenario where that's able to, even if it's not very effective. If you can fish for burns and burn physical attackers that are kind of starting to get out of hand, once they're burnt, they're not they're they're doing half damage. So Scald is just a great utility move, and again, it has high PP. So if someone wants to try to pressure stall you, it'll take a while before that Scald completely runs out. And then now, we have our Water Stab move. Let's get our Ground Stab move, which is easy, Earth Power. Earth Power is a fantastic move because most Mons that are weak to ground, their special defense typically isn't particularly high. So Earth Power will usually hit Mons relatively hard. And for another move, I think right now, given this current meta with Togekiss and Dragapult running around like crazy, I think it is fantastic to have Ice Beam for coverage. You could... Does she learn a better utility ice move? If you really wanted to expo exploit power, you could always run Blizzard, but I don't like the accuracy check on it. Or uh, Icy Wind, too, to give you speed priority. But we're running a Trick Room, so we're not going to use Icy Wind. That's not our thing. So Ice Beam, and then we will do Sludge Bomb. Now, because I'm an Assault Vested Attacker, the potential for me to Dynamax this Mon is very high. So you want to keep in mind what your um, moves are going to entail. Scald's fantastic because you're going to set the water up, get a boost on your water stab, and your opponent can't really benefit from it because your ability storm drain. So all their water attacks can pulled to you. So it's kind of a soul boost on your Gastrodon, which is really cool. Um, Earth Power raises Spideff, which are with Assault Vest. If you want to become unkillable to special attackers, just Earth Power um, Max Quake once. And then Ice Beam uh, sets Hail, which isn't ideal, but to pick up our KOs on the needed mons, it's needed. And then Sludge Bomb will increase our special attack. If someone wants to kind of try to pivot around our Dynamax and stall it out, we can at least set up and then get some Okos once it wears off. Now, Gastrodon has a water ground typing, okay? So you have your mon picked out that you want to use. You have a set that makes sense in the given meta, right? Let's find a partner that can pair with it Well and also knock some things out. Because I always like to start with my two offensive mons first. So Gastrodon being our bulky special attacker, I always like balance. You don't have to follow this rule entirely. This is just how I do things. This is what works for me. I think a fantastic partner with this Gastrodon, these typically won't be out at the same time. It's not necessarily the plan. But I think Rhyperior would be fantastic. And uh, Rhyperior has a... A quad weakness to water, as everyone knows. But luckily, let's see here, he gets the Solid Rock ability, which decreases super effective damage by a quarter. So we can kind of ignore the super effective hits like uh, Fighting and Ground, because those typically aren't going to do a ton. Uh, with it, Mold Breaker, Excedrill kind of being stuffed into singles, people are typically using um, Sand Rush. So his, uh, his Max Quakes and Earthquakes don't do... Uh, well, they don't Oko. They do a lot to Hyperior, but they don't Oko him. And they're typically a three-hit KO if he's Dynamaxed. If they're not Mold Breaker, that is. So we can kind of ignore those. So if Gastrodon and Rhyperior are on the field together, Rhyperior has no water weakness because all the water attacks are going to get pulled to the Gastrodon, which is fantastic. That is good synergy between the two Mons. This is just a basic example, but again, in hindsight, it works. And if you're going to pick a Rhyperior, let's get to his stats real quick. As you can see, his stats here, really high HP, attack, and defense, but really lackluster special defense. We can do one of two things. You can want to patch it up and run max special defense and just kind of accept the fact, max special defense with max HP, because if you just run max special defense, it's not going to eat up hits appropriately. You can accept the fact that a special defense is terrible and patch it up and try to run a weakness policy and get it to kick off. Or, the other way around, you can accept the fact that a special defense is terrible and you can just invest in his HP and attack and hope for the best of the weakness policy. This this will put up a lot, a lot of pressure because uh, an admin max attack Rhyperior will hit a hell of a lot harder than a Rhyperior that isn't invested. That is entirely up to you. I personally like to run bulkier Mons, and I like to patch it up with my pivots, so I would personally do a max special defense, max HP with a plus attack nature. Because if you feel comfortable playing well, you can kind of pivot your opponent into hitting you with a super effective hit and it not doing a lot of damage and kicking off your weakness policy. With things such as trying to get Scald Burns off with Gastrodon and uh, stuff of that sort. Now, let's think, because this is our other offensive mod. 
So this is, again, another mon that has high potential to get Dynamaxed. And if we Dynamax it, we want to make sure we have good moves that will benefit us and our partner. So, of course, with Rhyperior, I always like to run uh, Rock Blast. I, I, um, I play singles really heavy, so it holds a place in my heart. But since we're playing doubles, we're going to run Rock Slide. Now, when you Dynamax, everyone probably knows this, that Max Rockfall, it's going to set up a Sandstorm, and your Spadef goes up by a stage. And now, the Spadef is only base 55, 107. But once that Sandstorm's up, look at your defense. 130 is high. Base 150, that Sandstorm's up, you go up one stage, your special defense is now higher than your defense, which is crazy. This right period will not really... I don't really think there's anything in the game that can necessarily Oko him if his Sandstorm is up and he's at full HP. Dynamaxed. So, like, seriously. You'll be surprised if you ever try this out. So we're going to do Rock Slide. And then, of course, our next move is going to be kind of up to you. I don't like banking on Earthquake because it hits your partner. So for now, we'll play the safe route. Does he get high horse? Yes, he does. So we'll do high, high horsepower for a heavy single target attack. Again, this is another move. Stab attack, and it raises our spadef if we are Dynamaxed. Now, a lot of people are going to try to play around Rhyperior's uh, Dynamax and try to prevent you from prevent him from kicking off his weakness policy. If they want to start getting crazy and doing stuff like that, we just run hammer arm. We start getting our attack up while they're play, playing defensively, and we can start picking up some knockouts and pressure them to kick off our weakness policy. And then, of course, I'm trying to think. This is really up to you, but um, typically they're not going to be trying to wail on him while he's Dynamaxed unless they know they can knock you out that turn if they go first. But um, I would personally run protect because more than likely. As soon as you lose your Dynamax, he's going to get attacked to, to just take him off the field. So I would definitely just run a straight Protect. I, You could run Swords Dance to Protect while you're Dynamaxed, but I don't think that should be your number one concern because people usually play around you and uh, whatnot. But you can run it if you want to. So we have our Hyperior set. We have our two potential Dynamax Imans, our two Heavy Hitters. They both have Defensive Synergy. I like to set up my two Support Mons. Now, what I mean by support mons, mons that can fake out, set off, and intimidate, give you uh, speed control, whether it be through Tailwind or Trick Room, um, set terrain, whatever it may be. These are going to be your support mons that allow these guys to come in and start messing shit up. So, with this being said, with Gastrodon Rhyperior, this uh, slow core, I believe our first fantastic support mon would be Dusclops. Now, Dusclops will be great with Gastrodon, because, well, let's look at his stats real quick. A bit lackluster, but you got to see something here. Look at his defenses, okay? They're high as hell. And as long as he doesn't get taunted, he will not die. He, he, he is so bulky. And if you've versed Dusclops before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're running Dusclops, no matter what, you're going to run max HP. And with this given meta being so physically attack based we're going to run max defense and also the benefit of running max defense too let me show you something real quick look at gastrodon's defense base 68 you got dust clops base 130 so if, if gastrodon's in a position where it's going to get hit by a physical attack no matter what and you don't want it losing a lot of hp you just throw out that dust clops and he ain't taking no damage because guess what he can run an eviolite so uh, his defense, it ain't 182. I believe it goes up by one stage, 1 1.5. So his defense is 270. 270 defense. That is absolutely nuts. That, that's, that's insane. That is an extraordinarily high defense stat, and he will eat hits for that Gastrodon. Now, Dusclops ideally will be out in the field with Gastro or Rhyperior, right? So we want to make sure we can get our speed priority. Trick Room. If you want to be really annoying, you can do Ally Switch. Because if they're trying to hit your Gastrodon with special attacks, I mean, um, physical attacks and stuff like that, you can switch into them. Or if they have a Grass Type out, you know, you can throw them off. Because that's your only weakness. So you know who's going to be throwing that Grass Type move if you have a general idea of what the meta is. When they throw that mod out in front of your Gastrodon, it's usually for a reason. So you can Ally Switch up and be really annoying. And then we can run Will O Wisp. Again, he has high defense. Gastrodon is low defense. Will-O-Wisp, you get your target Will-O-Wisp, their attack is cut in half. Gastrodon's, Gastrodon's defense is now technically high, right? 
because they're gonna be doing half damage to him. That's fantastic. And then you always want to make sure you run Nightshade, so you at least have something to do damage with in case you get taunted. Which, with the way this meta is going, um, whenever I see Dustclops, I taunt him immediately. That's my thing, because Nightshade is not a good move. But, you know, you always gotta have an out. If you do get taunted, you don't want to just be clicking struggle on the field. So, support mon 1, done. This is my, um, uh, speed control, essentially. It's my trick room setter. So now for support mon number two. Now, we definitely have a definitive weakness to grass, right? It's a quad hit to Gastro and Rhyperior. That's really bad. We have two quad hits from that. Let's take Togekiss. Togekiss resists grass, okay? And again, she is a fantastic support mon. So let's think about this. Why, why would we choose Togekiss as a defensive pivot? Well, for one... Rhyperior, his special defense, is obscenely low. Togekiss's natural spit F is pretty high. It's not obscenely high, but it's really high. Base 135 with no investment. That is fantastic, and she has a decent HP stat. So if we're assuming that our Rhyperior is going to be trying to, you know, get hit by a special grass-type move, I would personally proceed to run max HP, right, to increase bulk. Now, Togekiss does have a naturally high special defense stat, so, if per se, but let's bust out the damage calculator real quick. Just real quick. I'll show you guys how to use this. So let's look up Togekiss. We'll run a blank set. And we will put Togekiss up against Rotom Grass. I know Rotom Grass gets quite a bit of usage. What is it? Rotom Mo. There it is. So let's do just the basic UU offensive support. Yep, max special attack with Leaf Storm. So we're going to take our Togekiss. And we're going to give it max HP, EVs. And then let's see how much spadef it takes. Because let's say we, we want that Leaf Storm to do less than 20%, right? So let's take that all the way up. What do we got to land at? So if you want the Leaf Storm to do less than 20%, you're going to have to dump... 252 EVs into special defense, which will make the Rotomo relatively weak against you because if it least storms your slot, you swap in, it cuts his special attack in half, and then uh, his Thunderbolt and Volt switch are not doing a thing. Nothing. So, max special defense. And just because, we will run a bold, well, let's plus defense minus speed. Now, this isn't the picture-perfect team. I'm aware of that. I'm just showing you guys the synergy you have to be looking for when building a team. Okay? So, Togekiss would be our pivot, to particularly against uh, Rotom Mo. The Leaf Storm doesn't do anything. And then afterwards, his Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, or Thunder isn't going to do anything. It'll Let's see. Thunderbolt will do 49 to 58%. Assuming he Leaf Storm first, you lost 20%. Then that Thunderbolt gets cut in half, it's going to do 25%. Okay? So you're not taking any damage from it. So we have Spadef Togekiss. And then to further increase her bulk, right? Because Excedrill is a top threat right now. Assume she's going to get wailed on by Steel-type move. So we're going to put up a Beery Berry on her to cut the damage of a Steel-type move in half to further increase her longevity and ability to support the team. Now, with Rhyperior and Gastrodon's weakness to Grass, if you have them side by side, she doesn't have to be... A speed control mon. She doesn't. She can be a follow me mon. So we throw her out in the field. She follows me. We pull all attack priority to Togekiss and keep Gastrodon and Rhyperior healthy to wail on things. And again, the defensive synergy is great. You, have, you want to hit Gastrodon on the grass type move? You have to try to knock out Togekiss first. And then if you see, you know, like Rotom Mo out, probably, they might anticipate the follow me and just try to immediately Thunderbolt your Togekiss, then you can get crazy and swap. But that'll be an on-the-fly thing. But as you can see with this max spadef Togekiss, it's not taking a whole hell of a lot from a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch. You're still good to get one turn of Follow Me off. So we have Follow Me. And then I personally, if I uh, want to make sure real quick our IVs are zero. People like to run uh, Super Luck. And you can. You can run Super Luck, Dazzling Gleam, Fish for Crits for Mons that boosted up. But this is our support Mon. And I do believe 
that running Serene Grace with Air Slash, giving you a 60% chance to flinch, will make this a true support style Mon. Because if you have speed priority, if Trick Room is up, you can spam Air Slash and flinch one of the opposing uh, Mon slots. And uh, if they're Dynamax, like, whoop de doo Just attack the other slot, you know, and try to work around it. But again, remember, Dynamaxes can't flinch. So we have Follow Me, Air Slash. What else does she usually run? I always just see her running uh, Follow Me, Air Slash. Thunder Wave wouldn't be a bad idea, um, but if we're running Trick Room, we don't want to make Mons any slower than they need to be. Let's see. Let me check. Or follow me, Air Slash. You could run Wish to Wish Pass. But you know what? We'll put Nasty Plot on her. And... Wish, honestly. So you can follow me to have good defensive synergy with Gastrod on Rhyperior. Well, if you're in a position where um, defensive synergy really ain't too much of a thing, you can just Nasty Plot in front of them, right? So... If they're going to be trying to predict your follow me and stuff like that and trying to work around that, instead of actually spamming follow me, you can just nasty plot up. And you can start to set up, and then the follow me will naturally kick in because you won't have to click it. They'll just start attacking you because, well, you're nasty plotted and things are about to get crazy. And then if you choose to go the route of nasty plotting, you can then Dynamax and protect. So again, support mon it can be annoying under a number of scenarios. Every mon should be able to fulfill multiple roles efficiently if you want to have good consistency in your matches. So again, Gastrodon, bulky, special attacker, one weakness, great coverage, fulfills multiple offensive roles. Rhyperior, a bit linear, but um, once his weakness policy is kicked off, big threat because Gargantuan attack stat and also Gargantuan bulk. Dustclops, can set trick room, can cripple physical attackers, can uh, redirect attacks, and then damage doesn't matter, but it's just his versatility of support is fantastic. Togekiss, offensive presence, these two, air slash nasty plot, the ability to flinch, follow me, the ability to pull move priority away from your um, your friend, and then wish support to uh, heal up your um, heavy hitters if they've gotten weak and you're able to pivot accordingly. Now, we have our two bulky offensive style mons, our two support mons, what I always like to do is run two defensive, defensively offensive oriented mons. These mons are going to be the ones that have the perfect defensive synergy with your two guys, and they don't necessarily like shoot for speed control or fake outs or whatnot, but they uh, you're able to pivot them in and pick up a KO if needed. So let's look here. Gastrodon's only weakness being grass. Let's First thing that comes to mind, let, let's see, let's see. We have a special attacker, support, special attacker. We have one physical attacker. So we're going to want a decent... We have a decent fire type that can resist a grass attack. So real quick... Arcanine. Now Arcanine... Is fant if you opt to not bring Trick Room and Togekiss be your support for a match, Arcanine would be a great pairing with Gastrodon. Because if Gastrodon and him are out on the field, well, the Storm Drain gets active, so Arcanine can stay alive. And you can also pivot the Arcanine in on Grass-type attacks. And even better, if they're a physical attacker, you get Intimidate. So their synergy is fantastic. Gastrodon is low defense. The more opt to hit him with a physical attack, you can throw out Arcanine, assuming that the attack is going to be super effective against Gastro. It really won't do much to Arcanine, and your Intimidate pops off too, so it's not doing anything to Arcanine. Now, now that we have his role fulfilled, right? He's a defensive pivot for uh, uh, Gastro and uh, Rhyperior if they opt to um, try to hit him with a Grass-type move, you know? Uh, if they're going to be Earthquaking him, do not throw Arcanine out unless you uh, it's their last two mons and you just want to get that Intimidate off to cripple them and get right here back in. So this Arcanine is a defensive, offensive pivot. Now we're running uh, primarily a Trick Room team, but I always like to make sure I have mons that can have a general uh, outspeediness to the meta. So for this Arcanine in particular... Just because our team composition at the moment... Then we run them jolly. You have to make sure you have outs. Again, outs on your team. If you're not able to get your trick room up, you want to make sure you have a mon with a decent speed tier that can outspeed 
um, a handful of mons. Base 95 is very respectable in this meta. Seriously, you will outspeed a lot of stuff. You want to make sure you're jolly, though, because you want to make sure you're outspeeding that jolly, etc. And now, Arcanine can eat our Grass-type move. And since he's going to be, like, um, he's not really, like, a bulky attacker, per se, but because he has Intimidate, his defense is actually relatively high after the Intimidate drop. But, um... Just for pressure, let's get Flare Blitz, because his job is to pivot in on a move, come in, mess some shit up, and then hopefully KO the Mon that is a threat to your um, the guy you swapped in him for in the back. Let him get knocked out and throw your boy back out and start wreaking havoc again. So we have Flare Blitz. We can run Snarl with his decent speed tier. You can speed some special attackers like uh, Duraludon, and you can lower their special attack. So that's a fantastic utility move for this Mon. And because people are going to be attacking him, because he's going to be coming in and out a lot, you're going to want Protect. And for a final move, let's per se, uh, our team's weak to Gyarados, because quad hit on Rhyperior, um, it gets power up, take out Gastro, put Wild Charge on him. Boom. You got outs for Gyarados when you see him. Okay? So now, oh yeah, item. And then we'll run him with um, Leftovers, just to further increase his longevity. So... If he's uh, getting low, you can kind of start protecting, or if he ends up becoming a kill priority, you can protect and uh, make your uh, opponent choke. Now let's take a quick glance over our team. Our two attackers, one special, one physical. Our potential Dynamaxers, two support. Now we have our Grass Weakness covered. We have a Flying Type Mon for our Ground Immunity for our Rhyperior. Let's try to fill this last bulky offensive slot. We have two fantastic grass resists. You can even go further and do a grass immunity and run Gudra, but I'm not looking to run Gudra on this team. Um, you have your water immunity, essentially, because Gastron has Storm Drain for that Rhyperior. So let's look for... You could go another ground resist, right, for that Rhyperior, or we can go for a fighting type immunity, right? Now, on this team, we have slow, 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 decently quick. If the uh, opponent's not running Trick Room and you have your Togekiss with a negative speed nature, she'll be slower than things that really aren't meant to be fast. I think I screwed my wording up. But if you take the time to make sure you have zero IVs and a negative speed nature, Togekiss will typically go first in a trick room if you're versing an opponent that is not running a trick room team. Because their mon's natural speed being um, assuming like possibly speed positive nature and perfect IVs in their speed, you'll be slower and go first in the trick room. Arcanine is quick. It's kind of a bit of a speed control. Get your Intimidate off. Pick up a KO. Now let's think. Max Knuckle is a fantastic move in this meta right now, right? So we're going to want a fighting type immunity on this team. Uh, Rhyperior being weak to fighting. Uh, Dusclops is a good fighting type immunity. Uh, you can spam ally switch with them. But let's think that Trick Room isn't the best scenario in this. Let's have one more fighting type immunity. And you can never go wrong with Dragapult, right? So we have Dragapult, a fantastic mod that can fulfill a lot of roles um, efficiently. But with him, let's take the time to look. We have a one physical attacker, two physical attackers, and then two special. This is a very defensive-oriented meta. So I'm going to personally run a special attacking Dragapult. Because we have our slow special attacker being uh, Gastrodon, I want a fast special attacker being Dragapult to possibly lead with, throw my opponent off, set Trick Room up later. You know, because Trick Room is not always going to be up every match. You might bring Trick Room and it might not go up, so keep that in mind. So item, I always felt this was the best one. Choice Specs. Choice Specs, Dragapult, he could, you know, off of a whim, you can Dynamax him. His speed tier is fantastic. I always go in Inf Infiltrator, so if they want to get crazy and set screens and stuff like that, you can get around it, right? So moves, we'll keep it simple. We want our stab moves, which will be Shadow Ball. It's the most spammable move in the game. Draco Meteor, this move Oko's Duraludon, even Assault Vested, I believe. If he's Dynamaxed, it will not. If he Dynamaxes, he'll do uh, roughly two-thirds. It really depends what Duraludon they're running. But if it's an off offensive Assault Vested, that will knock him out. Okay? And then we will run Fire Blast for um, Steel Typing Coverage. A, a lot of people opt to run Flamethrower because it's more consistent. But I like the extra damage it does to Excedrill and uh, Darmanitan also. And then I like to run Thunderbolt. 
to take care of Gyarados if he's out and about. And of course, we do max special attack, max speed, 400 HP, and we run him timid with this plus speed nature. He is fantastic for bodying Choice Scarf, Dracozult, and uh, Dracovish because he outspeeds them even if they are Scarf. So this is a mod I love to lead with and knock them out with. So guys, let's get into a little bit of an overview. I know this is a bit linear, me just talking about this one team. Let's get into the overview of these concepts. Your team composition, two bulky attackers in which their typings synergize very well. This is not picture perfect. It will not always be picture perfect. But Gastrodon's only weakness being quad, grass. Rhyperior's weakness is being water and grass. He has more weaknesses, but quad weaknesses that really create pressure. Those are the two. Gastrodon paired with Rhyperior gives him a water immunity, which is fantastic. Unless move, I believe Surf will still hit, but I don't see a whole lot of Surf, but just keep that in mind. So, good synergy. Physical attacker, ability to set up and sweep. Gastrodon, bulky as hell. Dynamax moves all are fantastic, and if people try to snarl you and stuff like that, you can spam max poison. You have outs. You have your outs. You're not going to let someone snarl you down and just ignore you and leave your Gastrodon sitting there, not doing any damage just to be, you know, fodder to kill at the end of the game while all your buddies die. You want to make sure you can continuously keep your special attack high and keep your Gastrodon healthy and pick up your KOs. Next, we have our support section. This is your speed control, your terrain control, your fake out, your taunt support. And in hindsight, per se, we didn't want to run Trick Room, right? Because our support's fantastic. We have Trick Room, Ally Switch, we have ability to cripple physical attackers and do a little bit of damage. Togekiss, pull attack priority away, fish for flinches, be able to set up and pass healing. But per se, you don't want to be super bulky. Per se, you want to be more offensive. And one mon I like to run, this is another great support mon if you opt to not run Trick Room. Grimmsnarl. Everyone knows about Grimmsnarl. And one thing you have to keep in mind, we're going to ignore the item for now. People talk about how this move doesn't work well. I think Fake Out is an amazing move. I think it's incredible. I think it's probably my most used move every match, actually. Because if you see a Wismacot, if they don't protect and you fake that thing out and you double up into it, you can get rid of their Wismacot turn one. And people who usually run Wismacot rely on it to pick up Okos. So... The only thing is, though, Wismacot can run Protect, and that'll be up to you to figure out and predict. Um, the Fake Out will be useless, because usually if they lead Wismacot with another Mon, they'll Dynamax the said Mon, and Wismacot will be left there. So, faking out the opposing Mon will be pointless. So if you assume the Protect is coming, just make sure you attack the other Mon. And by no means, Grimstone Hall's base 120 attack, that hits. Hits really, really hard. And for this sake, we'll do max attack, max speed, 4 to HP. I like to run mine admin. This max attack uh, admin, I believe, Oko's Dragapult non-dynamaxed with a sucker punch, which is why I love it. And we will run a focus sash, just because focus sash Grim Snarl is really annoying. So we have fake out. This meta is defensively oriented. You'd want to run reflect, right? Because he gets an amazing move called Spirit Break. Now, this isn't the best option if you're like Mons like Rhyperior of Low Spadef. You'd want to get that light screen up immediately and cut the damage in half. But you don't want Grimmsnarl to be such a, a wet noodle. I don't like having a Mon out in the field that, like, okay, screens are up. I can't do anything about it. I'll just ignore him and double up into the Mon on the other side. You know, you don't want that. You still want that presence, that pressure from your Mon to get your opponent to attack you. And Spirit Break is amazing because not only is it a 75 power stab move, it lowers special attack by one stage. So this is kind of like the light screen substitute. If you're focus dashed, right, assuming they're not going to double up into you the first turn, you'll be able to lower someone's special attack. Right? And if things line up with your fake out, you might be able to get your reflect off and a spirit break off, which is fantastic. So you see what I'm getting at. Lower your opponent's special attack, do some damage. A little bit better than light screen. I think it's more consistent than light screen. And then we would run Sucker Punch. And this Grim Snarl is a fantastic because if he gets taunted, well, it doesn't matter. Because he's going to put in work and um, if they do plan on taunting him, well, his reflect will go up before the taunt. Because he's immune to Wismacott's prankster taunt. So you reflect up and they can taunt you all they want because that's your only move, right? So again, remember fake out, and then never forget if you are getting bodied by Trick Room. It's as easy as this. You run Taunt. Taunt the Trick Room, right? So again, another support mon, another view on support. Fake out, screens, Taunt. These are mons to prevent your... You want to take your support mons. Your support mons are made to prevent your opponent from setting up. Yeah, that prevents your opponent from setting up, or they set you up right 
which having one of each is always a good thing. Having one mon to destroy your opponent's game plan, having one mon to add to your game plan. And then, at the end here, defensive pivots. Arcanine, again, pairs fantastic with our beloved Gastrodon, which I'm building the team around. He has the Intimidate, which lowers the attack. So as soon as Arcanine enters the field, the opposing mons, their attack drops. So by the time Arcanine is KO'd, per se, they haven't swapped, or it's their last two, once Gastrodon comes in, he is inherently bulkier because he has Versi mons that, you know, have decreased attack. And with his Assault Vest, if they have a special attacker, forget about it. They don't have a grass type move, it ain't doing anything to Gastro. He'll survive for a while. Great coverage, ability, he's a nuisance. He can knock out with Flare Blitz and Wild Charge, heavy hitting moves, and then he can snarl special attackers down. So if they have two special attackers out, you can snarl them down and get Gastrodon in for free. And if your opponent's snarled, they ain't doing anything. Nothing. Their special attacks won't do anything to Gastro. And then for our last bit, we have Dragapult to possibly lead or uh, pivot into fighting type moves. They're me going up against the Rhyperior to set up. And uh, you can pick up some KOs, some a lot of Okos, with his Choice Specs Dragobolt set. Because he outspeeds the majority of the game. And um, if you guys want to get crazy, this is a little bit of uh, added thoughts. Per se, you have your Togekiss, right? And you're like, hey, I want my follow me to survive one max steel spike from Excedrill, right? So we have the Barbiri Berry. You go into your damage calculator. Let's pull up Excadrill. We'll do the Sand Rush Sweeper. And none of that stuff matters. He will be life orbed. So there's oh I'm screwed up. There's our life orb, and then um, the max steel spike I believe is 130 base power. So I'm just gonna change the power to 130, right? So that life orb iron head is going to do 159 to 187 percent to our togekiss. Well, we want to cut that in half. So we're gonna put a barbiri berry on togekiss, and that drops it down to 79.6 to 93.8. So, no matter what, um, well, let's run bold, too, to see what that drops that down to. So, if you run a Spadef Togekiss, that's uh, bold, with the Barbary Berry, the first um, Max Steel Spike will do 72 to 85% to your Togekiss, which, if that is the case, then the other Mon will be forced to attack your Togekiss, and then the, your other Mon, whoever you have in with the Togekiss, gets to attack completely for free, because it's not going to take any damage. So, that's just one use of the damage calculator. If you're, you run your team... And you're like, man, that Mon's really annoying me. What Mons can I run to eat that hit? Or what EV spreads can I run to eat that hit? That's when you throw them in the damage calculator and you start playing with numbers. Um, that's really about it, guys. Let's do a little uh, uh, final little outro. Pick your Mon that you want to fuck shit up with. Pick another Mon that can screw shit up too, that partners well with him. Two supports to either benefit you or... Uh, prevent your opponent from setting up, and then two defensive pivots. This is just a general uh, outline that I used to get the Master Ball tier, and uh, it worked really well for me. It, team building is an art, and people can do anything they want, essentially, really, and make it work if they play well enough. This is just a little bit of a guide that I follow to kind of indefinitely make Mons work. Um, it kind of gives your brain, you know, an, an idea where to start and what to look for and what gaps to fill and what needs to be changed. It makes it a lot easier when you have two, 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 two. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video, and I hope to catch you guys in the online ladder during the 2020 International Challenge uh, for February uh, this weekend. Have fun in the tournament, guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Later.